you know, one of the most damaging things that could then happen. Convince the general public as well that we were somehow involved. I got nightmares in my head. I feel thoughts build up until I can't feel. My mind fills up into a creature, and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. I got nightmares in my head. I feel thoughts build up until. Hello and a warm welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Last but not least, let's have a look at this article from late September 2007, barely a month after the McCanns left Portugal in disgrace under a cloud of suspicion. It's titled, Maddie Body Was Stored in a Freezer, published in the Daily Star by Jerry Lawton, 29 September 2007. Cops to ask parents three key questions as resort is searched. And so what appears to be the case is the the Ocean Club Resort was being searched at the end of September for what? For a refrigerator. Quoting from the article, Police think Madeleine McCann's body may have been stored in a freezer before being disposed of. They've mounted an operation to pinpoint every cooler in the Portuguese town where she vanished. Police believe the body must have been kept somewhere cool because of soaring 40 uh, 40 degrees Celsius temperatures at the time. The couple deny any involvement in Maddie's disappearance. Body fluids said to have an 88% match to Madeline's DNA were allegedly found in a Renault Scenic hire car the couple leased 24 days after she vanished. Police have been trying to map out every move of the McCann's hire car. And so this is the mystery. How did Madeline's body, how did Madeline's remains, how were they hidden? How were they managed? How were they preserved? If you subscribe to this theory that her body was found or the traces of her body found in a car hire a car that was hired 24 days after the incident i mean the question then is where was madeline for those 24 days now 16 years later you'd imagine that this would be a huge blockbuster of a story at the time that in september 2007 that this particular story would have shaken the foundations of the British news media. And yet in late September 2007, even a week before this article in the Daily Star, the Daily Mail was singing a completely different tune. Nothing about refrigerators, nothing the following week about refrigerators. Instead, the Tupper 7 had decided then, of all times, to break their silence. The Tupper 7 had kind of maintained their silence for four months, they weren't talking to the media, and May went by, May, June, July, August. And then in the middle of the fifth month, September, they decided to talk to the media. This article in the Daily Star is about a conflict between the McCann's version and CCTV footage. And that's something that we haven't seen terribly much of. I've seen some of it. I think there's some footage uh, in the restaurant of some of the um, folks. And the, the article concludes, quote, The first full account of Kate and Jerry McCann's final day with their daughter has finally emerged. Now, this is in September. Friends broke a silence which has lasted more than four months to fill in the missing six hours at the center of police claims that the couple were involved in Madeline's disappearance. Now, if you take that at face value and you say, the police are struggling to deal with six hours of question marks, six hours of mystery, six hours where the movements of certain people simply cannot be accounted for. You can understand why the police would be a little concerned about that. And this is six hours before Madeline disappears. Going back to the article, quote, They spoke out after officers were revealed to be looking into apparent contradictions in what the 39-year-old doctors told detectives they did that day. Friends of the couple spoke out 
this is the top of seven, to counter police claims that detectives had been unable to confirm the whereabouts of Kate McCann and her daughter in the missing period. So they're basically saying, that's nonsense, Kate McCann is with us, right? The six-hour period forms a critical part of police attempts to build a case against the McCanns. The denial was made despite the McCanns being aware of the CCTV claims and being told yesterday that they were being used to illustrate alleged conflicts in their in their version of events. Now, what's quite interesting here is, certainly in the media narrative, is the speculation that there's this six-hour period that is strange. And instead of the McCanns responding to it, their friends are responding to it. Instead of the McCann saying, well, I was here at this point, this point, this point, this point, their friends are saying, well, they were with us, I guess. Going back to the article, quote, it was also pointed out that if anything, the claim that Madeline was was seen happy and excited at 6 p.m. could only help the McCanns as they battle against the police theory that they killed Madeline and mounted a cover-up, end quote. Now, I have to say, I don't subscribe to the theory that anyone intentionally um, killed Madeline. But what is interesting is that this article came out around the time that the refrigerator narrative came out. So you almost have a a war going on where the police, frustrated that the McCanns have left Pride de Luge, are looking into leads, trying to find evidence in terms of refrigerators, and then they... And then the counter to that, the counter to this effort, is the top of seven saying, well, this thing that you're worried about, the this thing that where you want to implicate the McCanns during this six-hour mystery period, well, we can explain it. And so, but there is this strange, also this strange period of over four months where no one seems to really have said very much regarding this. The article also points out Although restaurant staff are convinced they are right, it is possible they got the day wrong or simply made a mistake in identifying the McCanns during a busy week when the resort is full of British families. Now, if you think about what's going on there, that's also a contest between several members of the restaurant staff, not just one person, a group of, in in terms of the restaurant staff, that are all convinced about particular activities and actions and and the timeline and that is versus the um, version of events from the Tapa 7 another group that are convinced they are right now the only publication I could find that touched on the refrigerator narrative in September 2007 was the Irish Independent and uh, they did so in quite a in a way that was quite sympathetic to the McCanns Quote, the parents of Madeleine McCann have called for an end to the hurtful smear campaign after sensational new claims that her mother hid her corpse in a fridge after accidentally killing her. Tomorrow is the 150th day since Madeleine disappeared. Now, I did, do, I did try and do more research because I thought, surely there can't be just one publication that's touched on this. And I did then find another one the Daily Telegraph, and it is possible that there were even more, perhaps even the Daily Mail, but they have since scrubbed it online. Who knows? According to this article in the Daily Telegraph, quote, Madeline parents beg for slurs to end. Again, it's sympathetic to the McCann's cause, but this is a quote from the article. And the quote kind of reveals the origin of the story in Portugal about the refrigerator. Listen carefully to the following words. Portuguese newspaper Diario de Notícias claimed that between 7 p.m. and 8.30 p.m., while Mr. McCann was playing tennis, neither Madeline nor Mrs. McCann were seen. The newspaper said that Portuguese police were carrying out non-visible operations and locating apartments with fridges in the Praia de Luz area, but a source close to the McCanns dismissed the theory as Quote, total rubbish. Have you seen the size of the fridges in those apartments, he said. Of course they did not stuff in a fridge. Then, referring to the lost 90 minutes, the source added, Kate was not in the apartment alone with Madeline. Both Kate and Jerry were playing tennis, and they put then put her to bed together 
and they were down for dinner by 8.20 p.m. Clarence Mitchell also hit back at the increasingly wild claims being circulated in Portugal. He said, It's just utterly ridiculous, this allegation after allegation, unsourced, unsubstantiated and unnamed, he said. Then the only other story in English I could find, obviously not published in Britain, was from a Bulgarian news agency of all things. Madeleine killed by her mum, body hidden in fridge. Source Portuguese police, dash Portuguese police. So although this was a huge turning point in the case, as I say, most of the British media seem to be essentially pretending either not to know about it or if they did, really rallying, really putting themselves in the corner of the McCanns, uh, defending them. The Novitonite platform reported in September 2007, and the, the words in this report are quite interesting if you pay the attention to those details. According to a report in the respected Diario de Noticias newspaper, so what they're saying in the first lines here is that this is actually a credible newspaper. It's not a tabloid. It's not Correo de Manha. It's not something like that. It's, a, I guess, the um, Daily Telegraph or the Telegraph version of, you know, the, the British paper in Portugal. And they're saying... Police officers believe that she was accidentally killed. I think I would phrase that differently and that say that she died by accident because killed suggests something else. Um, the article states that Madeline died while her father was playing tennis. Her body then passed through various locations, according to the article, before going into the boot of the car hired by her parents 25 days after she disappeared, according to the report. Now, if you think about that, it's a slightly different interpretation. It's not that um, Madeline was in a refrigerator in the Ocean Club, but that Madeline's body may have been taken somewhere, perhaps close to the coast, and then from there transferred somewhere else, and at some point, perhaps to a refrigerator. That seems to be what they, what they are theorizing. Going back to the article, as a result, detectives want to inspect fridges at the Ocean Club complex where the McCanns were staying with a group of seven British adults. Personally, I don't think that that would be a very uh, clever way of going about anything. I don't think the Ocean Club complex is where they needed to look for something like that. Going back to the article, the four-year-old girl vanished, actually three years old, she was almost four, vanished from the apartment room at the Portuguese Praia de Luz Resort on 3 May while her parents were eating with friends at a nearby restaurant. The family maintains Madeline was abducted. Now, I must say, I don't really like the words there that Madeline vanished while her parents were eating. The qu real question is, when was the last time Madeline was seen? And I suppose you could argue that the last people to see Madeline were her parents. Anyway, if we return to the Daily Star article, but they are also trying to trace any location where a body, where body may have been stored before being shifted. They have been given permission from prosecutors to search every fridge, according to a Portuguese newspaper, meaning every fridge, I guess, in Pride de Luz, not just the Ocean Club. A source close to the investigation reportedly said police looking for the little girl's body are looking for two hiding places. They believe she, she may have been kept somewhere close at first before being moved to her final resting place. Now, I don't like dealing with information that is difficult to source or difficult to verify or difficult to show. But as far as I understand the blog post that was apparently deleted the refrigerator that Jerry was said to have wanted to replace, wasn't that to do with the villa? It wasn't to do with the Ocean Club. If it was to do with the Ocean Club, I would say that doesn't really make a lot of sense. If it was to do with the villa, that would, to me, make a little bit more sense. Not only in terms of that someone would possibly do that, but also in terms of the timeline. The article continues, It stands to reason if she was initially hidden, it must have been cold to preserve the body. 
They are locating apartments with fridges and freezers, all of which will be examined. Last night, a source close to the McCann's legal team branded the freezer claims absolutely ridiculous. So what do you think? If you were in charge of this stage of the investigation, where would you start searching for something like a refrigerator? And we'll deal with that, the best strategy, what would make the most sense in terms of that in the next episode.